Hello and welcome back. Apple's One More Thing Mac event. It's basically the biggest change to Apple's computer lineup since 2006 when they introduced Intel chips. I'm gonna tell you why that is. So Apple switched their laptops and desktops to Intel chips back in 2006. Uh, that's actually some of the very first reviews I ever wrote at CNET. And now many years later, they are getting rid of Intel chips and moving on to what they previously called Apple Silicon chips. Uh, now it's called the M1 and it's their own design just like they designed the chips for iPhones and iPads. Uh, now they're designing the chips for the Macs as well. That's both MacBooks and Mac desktops, as we saw at Apple's event, where they talked about putting this M1 chip in three systems to start with, the classic 13-inch MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and also the Mac Mini. And that Mac Mini, that's the dev kit, basically, they'd been sending out to software developers over the summer so they could work on uh, new versions of their software that were optimized for the new M1 versions of the Macs. The two new MacBooks and the Mac Mini, physically, they're basically the same as the previous versions. The real change is inside, adding that M1 chip. Apple describes it as an SOC. That means system on chip, which means basically instead of having uh, a processor from one company and a GPU from another company, and put it, it's all it's all together in one package. Uh, so it's an eight core chip. And Apple says that four of the cores are very high power cores and four of the cores are very high efficiency cores, which basically means some of them are used for very power intensive things like editing high res resolution video, we're playing games, and the, the more efficient ones are used for basically saving battery life, making sure the system runs longer. And that's one of the big claims that Apple made about these new systems, the two new laptops at least, is that they would have much better battery life. We saw similar claims when people started putting ARM chips in Windows laptops over the last couple of years. And in a sense, that's essentially what this is as well. It's just Apple's custom version of it. On the Windows side, those claims did not really pan out. We really didn't see that much better battery life. But Apple says, for example, in the MacBook Pro, you get up to 20 hours of video playback, uh, which they say is the longest battery life of any MacBook ever. The most interesting of the new M1 powered Macs is probably the new MacBook Air. It looks the same as the current 13 inch MacBook Air, which was just updated back in about March of this year. Uh, and frankly, very popular system. Everybody loves it, rightfully so. Still $9.99. The biggest change besides the M1 chip is it is now, because it has this very efficient new processor inside, it is now fanless. So it will run quieter. And of course, if you don't have a fan in there spinning around, uh, that can give you some additional battery life because you're not spending battery power to keep that fan going. One disappointing thing about the new MacBook Air is that even though Apple says uh, both the Big Sur operating system and the M1 chip can uh, leverage some you know, software and AI to make the image better from the built-in webcam, the webcam hardware is not actually any better. And MacBooks, frankly, have always had not great webcams. And that continues. There's also a new 13-inch MacBook Pro Interestingly, it has the same M1 chip as the Air does. So we have a lot of questions about what the actual difference in performance is going to be like between the 13-inch Pro, which is $12.99, and the 13-inch Air, which is $9.99. Are, are you spending extra on that Pro just to get uh, the touch bar that's built in, a uh, slightly brighter screen, a few other bells and whistles, but it's got the same performance and it's got the same processor inside. Previously, there were processor differences between the Intel versions of the Air and the Pro. Uh, we are again gonna have to get these systems in and benchmark them and test them to see what exactly you're getting by spending more on the Pro. Right now on paper, at least, it looks like that 999 MacBook Air is probably the best bang for your buck. And last but not least, that new M1 chip is going into the Mac Mini. That is a cult favorite little micro desktop that Apple pays attention to sometimes, but mostly just ignores. It goes years and years without an update. This is a pretty significant update, adding the M1 chip to that. A lot of people get the Mac Mini and they use it for video production and music production. And frankly, 
It's the least expensive Mac you can get. Uh, this new M1 version is $699. So I'm pleased that the lowest cost Mac is also one of the ones that is first to get this new M1 chip. Now we still have a lot of unanswered questions about the M1 chip and about the Macs that contain it. How does their performance compare to the Intel versions? How does it compare to iPads and iPhones that have uh, similar ARM-based CPUs in them? We're gonna have to wait till we get these systems and benchmark them and use them hands-on to get a feel for that. But in the meantime, it's still very exciting that this is the biggest overall change to the Mac lineup since 2006 when they moved to Intel chips. Now it's 2020, they're moving away from Intel chips. So Apple once again controls everything about the Macs, the hardware design, the software design, and now the chips inside as well.